I'd like to take you all on a tour of my neighborhood, Loudoun County, Virginia, as I show my top 10 favorite things about ArcGIS Pro at version 2.0. I designed this list to be a series of focused things focused on helping you do your work better. Zooming to the town of Ashburn, let's kick off the countdown with my number 10 item, ArcGIS Pro now supports annotations. Let's change the annotation for this house. By viewing its attributes, I can change its style to emphasize the feature. Let's choose a callout with transparency and set the text color to black. Now, using feature linked annotation, I can select the address point and edit its attributes to correct the house number. I'll then use the new annotation edit tool to reposition my recently updated annotation exactly where I want it. Better yet, I can fix this street name by taking advantage of something you've all been wanting to do, edit text directly on the map. Next, the number nine item on my list is all about data exploration with new charting tools. Here is a box plot showing the distribution of wealth in Loudoun County. The chart uses the same symbolization that I've applied to my data, showing the county's eight election districts. It looks like Catoctin has the highest median value and the highest distribution. Using a second chart, we can look further in depth at the distribution of wealth, but the magic happens when I link my two charts together. Now, whatever I select in my box plot will propagate over to the bar chart and to the map. These charts were created from the long list of attribute fields in my districts layer. So as a bonus item to my countdown, if you feel the need, the need for speed, when scrolling through tables with hundreds of fields, then you'll love how quickly you can scroll through and work with attribute tables in Pro 2.0. My next countdown item is layout improvements. Adding your charts to layouts is new to Pro, as shown here. What's even more exciting is that these charts update dynamically as I move from page to page in this map series. Also, since the very beginning, you've been asking for grids and graticules in Pro. And here they are. And if all that wasn't enough for you, here's one more layout improvement. Just like your charts, your map legends can also be set to update dynamically. Moving over to Dulles International Airport, let's check out my number seven. The Auto Geo Reference Tool is one of several new imagery enhancements in Pro. Adding in an older aerial image and manually fitting it to the display, I can clearly see that it's misaligned. When I run the tool, it can find tie points from the World Imagery Service from ArcGIS Online, which it uses to transform the image to its proper position. Upon completion, you can clap. <laughs> Upon completion, a quick swipe of the image reveals that it was placed correctly and shows the construction of a new runway. Now the next item on my list comes directly from your feedback through GeoNet. It's also the number one question I get asked when talking to ArcGIS Pro users. Where did the catalog go? We've heard the feedback loud and clear, and if you didn't notice it already, the number six item on my countdown is the catalog's back. Reborn from the project pane, the catalog pane features a new favorite section that stores all of your commonly used folder, database, and server connections, in addition to a growing list of support for OGC standard services. No more reconnecting to data when you launch a new project. The fifth item on my list is also directly from your feedback. ArcGIS Pro now supports WFS. Let's examine a WFS layer I'm reading in from the USGS. If I wanted to find out which rock types are present in Loudoun County, I could use this WFS geology layer in the CLIP geoprocessing tool. Once complete, I'm left with a subset of the data over Loudoun County, and I can then use a chart to view which specific rock types are present in the county and in what quantities. 
And that'll show up in just a second when the WFS draws. There we go. All right, so now that that's in there, we can view my chart. And the output from the clip geoprocessing tool shows us which rock types are present just in the county. All right, you guys are making this too easy with the, with the applause. Uh, the, the number four item on my list is 3D editing and visualization. Let's fly over to one of my favorite restaurants in Leesburg, which used to be an old train station. These buildings were created from this coarse LIDAR data that didn't properly capture the geometry of the old train platforms. Using the multi-patch editor, I can fix the issue by splitting the roof surface in half and then dragging it upwards to match the LiDAR outline. That's just one of the many things you can do with 3D editing. For visualization, check out these power line features that I created using a 3D geometric effect on a line feature. The power pole markers are attribute controlled, so by updating the spacing and height fields, I can control how the poles are visualized. This is a powerful tool for viewing design alternatives. Let's check out that change from another angle. All right, so how many of you have ever become disoriented when working in 3D? I know I have, and it looks like that guy has over there as well. <laughs> so my number three item will help with that. I present the on-screen navigator. Using it in 3D, I can easily drop to the ground and then walk down the street past the power lines. In a controlled manner, I can then look down the street to my left and continue walking back to the restaurant to grab a cold beverage. Now, if I want to examine the platform roof that I just edited from different angles, I can place it in the center of my target and then use the inner ring on the navigator to orbit around it. Finally, whether you're in 2D or 3D, should you lose your bearing, the navigator serves as a convenient north arrow. Let's head back to Ashburn for the number two item on my list, which is the improved sharing experience in ArcGIS Pro. At version 2.0, we've extended the idea of a connected desktop, making it even easier and faster to share your work with your organization. There are three different sharing configurations that take all the guesswork out of how I should publish my data by allowing me to simply pick what I want users to do with it. I know that I want people to use this map for visualization purposes, so Pro knows that what I really want is cache tiles. Now, before I dramatically reveal what the number one item on my top 10 countdown list is, I want to show you a fun new feature of Pro that you may not have seen before. For those of you who work in low light conditions, we've introduced a new dark theme to help reduce eye strain and because it looks cool. Now, you have to restart Pro to get the theme change to take effect, or you can take advantage of the number one item on my countdown, drum roll please, and launch another instance of Pro. Yes, in version 2.0, you can now work with multiple projects simultaneously. Thank you. <laughs> 